everybody. Candace Daniola with Pet Boss Nation here with Pets Plus live beyond the pages. And we are in true live fashion running a little behind schedule, but I wanted to get on camera for you. And I was just like testing out my lighting and it looked a little dark. So we brought in some new lights that might be ooh, loud and bright right now. But hey, you know, when you're live, you just have to roll with the punches. So my my lighting guy is getting me all camera ready. <laughs> and um, I'm excited to talk to all of you tonight about how to go live on Facebook. We have a special guest with us, Nancy Hassel from American Pep Professionals. She'll be joining in just a little bit. And since you're just tuning in, I love to first start out and just, you know, see who's with us. Let me know you can hear me. All right. Oh, gosh, you guys are already, you're so good. You're already chatting in the feed. Shannon's with us and Elizabeth and Pam from Pets Plus. Awesome. All right. Okay. So, you know, as I've already mentioned, we're going to be talking about Facebook Live in this episode. I also, though, have a few polls for you. Um, hold on one moment. Turn it, it goes around the other way. Yep. Lighting guy, turn the lights the other way. <laughs> uh, tonight I have a poll for you because, you know, video is the trend. It's not only the trend, but it's where everything is going. And um, it, if you have never done video before, that's okay. Um, we're good, babe. We're good. <laughs> if you haven't done video before, that's okay. Nancy and I are going to go over all kinds of things to help you feel comfortable. One moment. I want to know if you've ever done live on Facebook. So for those of you watching tonight, if you're watching on the live presentation, we have a poll that's popped up. If you're watching a replay, definitely just chat in the comments or like or love if you've gone live before. Looks like everyone that is watching, there is a poll off to the off to the side there. We're at half and half right now. You know, whether you, you know, sometimes you get a camera, whether it's a camera like we've got tonight, webcams or on your cell phone, there's cameras. You know, you, obviously you want to make sure you've got a strong Wi-Fi signal and that uh, you're ready to go live. But sometimes you get really nervous <laughs> and you're worried you're going to say something wrong. And you might also just be wondering, you know, if anyone's going to show up and watch or, you know, maybe you're just wondering what all the fuss is about. But no matter what, you know, what we're going to go over tonight is just to have fun, be you, and really be consistent. You know, if you're not consistent with any marketing strategy, it's not going to work well for you. So it looks like most of our viewers tonight have tried, not most, but about 57% have tried Facebook Live. I'm going to end that poll. I'm also curious if, let's see. I want to know how many of you are comfortable going live. Are you comfortable getting on camera? That's a pretty scary place to be. I mean, most of us grew up in a generation where we didn't have social media. We didn't have cameras following us, potentially following us around. We didn't have cameras at our, at, at our fingertips at every moment. I mean, half the time I forget I have a camera that I can that I can use to show. So yeah, here we go, guys. So even though the majority have tried it, 86% of those watching tonight are they're not comfortable. They are not 86% are not comfortable going live. Okay, I have one last poll for you. And we're gonna re we're gonna revisit these questions at the end in case uh in case we haven't covered exactly how to conquer these. And the last poll that I have is, has going live translated into sales for you? As a business owner, it's really, really important that the energy and the marketing that you're doing uh, is translating into revenue because you have a business. So right now we've got about, you know, have 50% say no, it hasn't translated into sales and 50% are unsure Actually, the people who are unsure is getting even higher. So that's the thing. How do you even measure all of this? Is it a success or not? Well, 
I am ready to get started now. I am just ready to talk more. You know, welcome everybody to um, Pets Plus Live Beyond the Pages, where we go dig deep into the magazines. I'm your show host, Candace Daniolo, pet business coach with Pet Boss Nation and a regular columnist for Pets Plus Magazine. In each of these episodes, you get to go on a journey with me beyond the pages, interviewing some of the experts, contributors, and stores, providing you with extra content, digging deeper into the articles, and giving you an opportunity to chat directly with us. That's right. This is not just a one-way show here. I want you to chat in the thread, to ask us questions, and feel free to share, share, share. So do not be shy. Uh, we, you can ask questions at any moment throughout the whole presentation, or if you're watching a replay, you can still comment, and we'll be happy to follow up with you in those comments. Um, but I promise that if you stick around through the whole thing, you will learn something. You will absolutely, absolutely learn something. And I want to dig in. Right now, we've got the uh, April issue of Pets Plus. So Pets Plus is the latest uh, pet industry publication. And it's an essential business builder for anyone who has a dog boutique, a retail store, grooming facility, kennel, daycare. I mean, heck, you don't even have to be in the pet industry and you will learn something from this magazine. I've already um, tagged a bunch of these pages, but I just want to pull out a couple cool things. So in each issue of the magazine, they have an entire calendar of things that you could be promoting and talking about on your social media. They also have a section that is full of products, all the latest products. And then at the back, they always feature their America's Coolest Store. So we just talked to Bonnie from Maxwell and Molly's Closet. So there's always a cool store somewhere in America that gets featured. And then this is really cool too at the back. They propose a real deal scenario where there might be a really difficult situation and um, we, they ask their readers how they would respond to that situation. So that's really, really, really neat. Um, but tonight, we're going to talk about this article, their special feature. It's all about Facebook Live, all about Facebook Live. And um, the reason that um, I contributed to this article is because, you know, I'm a former store owner myself, and I incorporated a, a live, when I had my store, live wasn't really uh, readily available. I used it a lot in my doggy daycare and a little bit at the tail end of when I had my store. But I still used video a lot in my, in, my, in my previous retail career. And I use it a lot in my marketing strategies now with Pet Boss Nation. Um, so I've definitely been in your shoes, whether you're a newbie or a video pro. But my guest tonight, who is also a contributor on many, many facets of this magazine, and she's been in the pet industry as a long time as well, and in the media industry, is Nancy Hassel. So I'd love for Nancy to come on camera now. Here we go. I will make you bigger. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Candace. Hey, everybody. Hi. I just realized my cell phone's on. Another live <laughs> aspect. I should have turned my phone off before we went Put it live. on D&D, right? Do not disturb. Do not disturb. That's right. Actually, that's right. I should, because now it's synced to my computer. Okay. This is a great lesson. It's synced to my computer, so I have to do not disturb. Absolutely right. All right. Hey, Tim. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look, yeah, you know, you and I, we know a lot of a lot of amazing pet business owners. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Nancy. She's the founder and the president of American Pet Professionals, an award-winning business networking and educational organization for the pet industry since 2009. Nancy has 10 plus years <laughs> in experience as a TV producer. How cool is that? That's really, really neat. So many yeah. of us um, have never been on a set or have always wondered what's going on behind the scenes, but Nancy's been behind the scenes. Yep. And she also, on camera now, hosts a weekly Facebook Live show for her American Pet Professionals page, uh, where she showcases lots of amazing people in the pet industry. Yeah, well, thank you for that lovely introduction. And like you said, I run American Pet Professionals. I see some of our members in the chat. 
And you're a member, I've been doing this for nine years. And for people that don't know, I've hosted over a hundred in-person networking events, seminars, educational things for anybody in the pet industry. And it's something I absolutely love doing and education and doing things like this is, you know, something that, you know, lights me up inside. It's one of my most favorite things to do is to really help educate people. So I'm really um, honored to be here. Thanks for having me, Candace. But yes, being on a TV set, 16 hour days for a 30 section, 30 second commercial for a four day shoot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 30 second commercial takes four days, huh? Yeah. Well, not anymore, <laughs> right? Post-production, yeah, not really, no. Anybody can make a 30-second commercial nowadays. Yeah, and you know, I interviewed on the Friday Facebook Live last year, the end of last year, was Rodney Habib from Planet Paws, and he's got the biggest Facebook page on Facebook in the pet world, and he shot his entire documentary series on his phone, and he's a videographer by trade. He's amazing mm -hmm. with that, but just on his phone, so that's why I'm like, you don't need a lot of equipment. I have a lot of show and tell stuff, if you don't mind, as we go, mm -hmm. of different things that you can use to um, you know, do live, but I'll let you lead this since I know we have some questions to get to. Yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do with this, with our training tonight, is we're going to kind of walk through the article that uh, yourself and myself and Pam Mitchell from the magazine, she's a senior editor of the magazine. We were all three contributors to their About Face special feature. And, and Pam's portion was really the initial kind of rollout and announcement of what Facebook recently announced, you know, back in, at the end of January, uh, where they are moving away just from the overall content and the things that maybe some of us feel like we like to, we like to see. And they really yeah. wanted to move towards a more engagement between users. They want people to connect. They want engagement. And so, um, that scares a lot of you know small businesses because they use Facebook so much and rely on it so much. And um, I, I guess, do you feel like this for any of our community or any any small businesses to worry that about about this change in Facebook? Um, I mean, I for me, I personally have never really worried about Facebook. I honestly don't care. It's terrible to say. I love the connection and meeting with people. But for my business, I have a much stronger um, uh, focus on my, I send out our newsletter and I have a huge subscription base on that. And I've been building that since before I even launched my business. So yes. while I am all over social media, like you, you know, I'm on everything. I never really worry about how many people, because I look at it as um, quality over um, quantity, right? Mm -hmm. Just like if you were doing a Facebook ad, you really want to uh, make sure that you're going after the right audience. So I kind of look at it that way as well. And I know that some businesses have really, um, you know, worked with Facebook, done a lot of advertising. And now I'm seeing more and more emails come my way from those businesses that were not utilizing email at all because they realize they have to go somewhere. So I've always been, you have to do a little bit of everything and not to panic about it and be strategic about it. And I think Facebook Live or any live platform on social is an incredible tool to use. And we'll talk about a little bit further all the tips and stuff that we can do to get mm -hmm. you more comfortable. But we were saying before that I was a TV producer. And one of the things that I tell everybody is I was terrified of the camera. <laughs> I used to run from my other producers. Really? Not, oh my God, terrified. I hated to have my photo taking everything. And now wow. I'm like, oh, are you with the media? Let me look at that camera. <laughs> well, let me check my own camera. That's so yeah. amazing. I would never have thought that you were oh shy. God, I hated it because they would come in the back and be like, we need, and I'm like, nope, she wants to do it. And they would need both of you. I'm like, please, no. Oh, it was so stiff and awkward. It was horrible. So, but I think that, you know, the beginning part of like really focusing on the changes that are happening with Facebook, um, you know, you just have to be strategic and start utilizing different ways. And I don't think Facebook's going to go away and all the end Facebook, delete Facebook stuff is kind of crazy in my opinion. If you've built up a following, if you've built up loyal fans, why would you leave them? Even if they're not seeing your page, you could create group pages like you've done and I've done and everybody else has done. And I think that there's always going to be a way, but I love the Facebook Live. Yeah. So, be, you know, Facebook Live, and this is what they've, they've kind of shared the statistic with us, is that um, live videos are six times more likely to be seen and engaged with than a regular video posting. If you had pre-recorded right. Loaded it, and yep. so um, that's kind of what we're talking about here is helping people get go live. 
Um, so let's, I mean, the, the article that Pam shared is a lot about kind of what Facebook had to say about it. And yeah. now while, you know, both you and I, I think, agree that, you know, Facebook cannot be your sole strategy, marketing strategy. You have to right. um, utilize the things you have control over, like your email list or your website or your, yeah. um, you know, in, in, every business is different, but any of the elements that they have. But um, it is so easy to grab your phone, get on camera, and engage with people and kind of give them a behind-the-scenes look into the business. So let's dig into your article. And your article, I'll pull it up here, and hopefully people can kind of see it's on this next page here. <laughs> it talks about prep and practice. And you have five kind of strategies and steps. So I'd like to kind of walk through each one so that we can elaborate sure. more about yeah. each of the ones you suggested. So your absolutely. very first one was uh, start simple. Yeah, so absolutely. I mean, I you know, I just spoke about this topic at Global and everybody was like deer in headlights. I'm like, how many people have gone live? Just like you did the poll before and people yeah. are like, they didn't even want to answer the question. And I'm like, we're not live now, although I did live stream for like 30 seconds before. Yeah. But you definitely want to start simple. I think some of the easiest things that you could do is, you know, of course, start simple with being connected to Wi-Fi, the basics, but you're do not disturb on. If yeah. you're doing it on your computer, make sure your computer is plugged in. Make sure that if you're using your phone, your phone is plugged into an outlet or a battery pack or something like that, because you don't want to be getting this great groove in your first live stream and doing well. And then all of a sudden your phone dies and you're like, uh, oh, no, or your Wi-Fi craps out. So start it's simple. Part of the memory. I think that happened to me earlier today on Instagram. Oh, <laughs> was, right. Why did this stop? And I ran out of memory. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I, I have. Um, I pay way, pay way too much more money for this stupid phone. So I have no. I've never had that problem. But my old iPhone, yes, totally. Every time I try to do anything, I'd run out of memory. Um, but yeah, start simple. Start with your phone. There's so many ways that you can either go Facebook Live from your phone, in your business, in your group page, if you're really nervous about it, you can actually, a couple of tips that I've done to practice, and I'm just gonna backtrack a little bit. Um, I did, a lot of the practice that I did was on Periscope. So Periscope mm -hmm. was an app, was one of the first apps. There was Meerkat and then there was Periscope. And Periscope is still around, Twitter now owns Periscope. Um, but that's where I did, I did live broadcasts a couple of times a week and I did probably 100 or 150, maybe more broadcasts giving tips and tricks and stuff. And I've literally met people from around the world, from Australia in person, from Japan in person, because they were watching my live broadcast. So that kind of blew my mind that I was going on my phone. Um, global. Yeah, just like talking about pet industry stuff. Um, yeah. And then I kind of got over Periscope because they um, used to be, um, it used to not record and stay on your phone and it would be instant. So that sense of urgency was always a lot of fun because then you could promote it and then people would show up like in masses. Um, mm -hmm. And then they started doing 24 hours and then keeping it forever and I was over that. So I like Instagram live for the 24 hour thing. But I would say start simple, start with your phone. One of the tricks that you can do to practice is practice by recording yourself on your uh, regular video. You know, you don't have to go live right away. If you're really nervous about it and you want to know how the ins and outs work from your phone, all you have to do is go, you could go onto your profile, your regular profile, and there's the drop down where it says only me and it's private. So you could do a Facebook live that is only you talking to yourself, practicing. So maybe you have like some new products that just came into your store or you have this great event happening coming up or whatever it is, um, or you wanna do some grooming tips or you know whatever it is that you wanna do, you could do it only me and then you can record that. Oh, thanks Pam. Um, you can record it and then watch it, <laughs> right? Because mm -hmm. you wanna know, make sure that you're actually saying what you wanna say and when you, the more you do it, the more you watch yourself, you go, oh, okay, I, I forgot about that tip or I should have said that. So really that's yeah. a really easy tip. The other thing that you can do is if you're afraid to go um, private, you can create a private group page and put like one or two other trusted people in there and do your Facebook lives into that group page that you only have two people in there. And then right. you can just go from there and it makes it easier. So yeah. start simple, use your phone. Don't worry about lighting right away. Don't worry about um, microphones, tripods, which I'm gonna show you. I have a lot of props on my desk here, um, but you don't have to do all that right away. You just have to start. 
right? Mm -hmm. That's the hardest part is hit and go live. Right. I know it's like nerve wracking. People are going to see you. The one other start simple tip I would give you is remember that you're live. <laughs> if you're really grooving with somebody, like I'm from New York and all truth told, I curse a lot. <laughs> so I have to make sure that when I'm live, I'm not cursing. <laughs> so sometimes a curse word will come out and I'm like, oops, sorry guys, I curse, you know? So sometimes you have to remember that once you get really comfortable with it, you're like, uh oh, that was, we were live talking about that. So really try to be cognizant of that fact that you're live. Sorry, that was a really long start simple tip. Oh no, it was great, it was great. There's one thing I do wanna mention though, the, the only me thing um, and the privacy thing, I think that only works you know, if you're going from your personal page. Um, yes. business, pages, business pages do not have that function, everybody. No, no, um, but you should try it from your personal page. Absolutely, try it from yeah. your personal page, test it out, I think that's a great tip. And I love yeah. the idea of a group, like anyone can start a group and you can, really kind of play around with the group platform before you add people to it too. Yeah. Those are all, those are all really good tips. Um, okay. Let's go on to tip number two. Promote. Yeah, so promote. What? <laughs> Present, promote, yeah. promote, promote. Right. So you know this as well as I do, that if you are scheduling a live, like on my Friday Facebook Lives, I always promote it as far out in advance as I can. Sometimes um, the scheduling comes only two or three days beforehand and doesn't matter, I still promote it. So I'll go into Canva, we all love Canva, I'll make a graphic, and then I'll resize the graphic for all my social media platforms, and then I'll go and ask everybody that I know to watch. So mm -hmm. I promote it on social media, I promote it on my newsletter if I can, I promote it in an email to my members, like to anybody that I think is gonna find value or interest in watching it, promote it. And then of course, if I have a good following or if people watch the whole thing or whatever, I promote it afterwards. So pre-promote, during, and then afterwards. Yeah. So what I do, yeah, what I do afterwards is pretty easy. I take a screenshot of the, like if you and I were on Facebook Live right now, we'd be like, one of the shots that we were like smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like this. <laughs> I would totally take the shot of us smiling. <laughs> yeah. And then from there, um, I would, if you, are on Facebook, you can capture the URL by right clicking. When you go into videos on Facebook, on your business page, not to the actual where it was, you go to the video tab, click on videos, find the one that you wanna promote or use with that picture. And then you right click on that and you get the URL. So then I take that fun picture that we took and I'll put it in the week after or days after for that email. And then it goes out again and then people will click on it and watch. And it's the same thing, so you can share it afterwards as well. So you want to pre-promote it, and then during, if you can tag some people, and then afterwards. Yeah, I love that tip. Okay, tip number three, script it <laughs> or go off script. Both. More. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, I always write out my, my questions, right? And so for people that, like we were talking before we went live, for people that are really nervous that you're interviewing, um, or even if you're just doing it, you want to give yourself bullet points. Like when I did all those periscopes, I always had a sheet hung in front of me or my computer off to the side and I had what I was going to talk about just mm -hmm. to guide myself along. And of course, as people pop in and ask questions, it could change the trajectory of the actual live and that's okay, but at least you have something. We One have some right now. I have, I have my little script I'm going through now. So yeah, always be prepared. Yeah. One of the things I will say though is kind of funny is in my over preparation and doing my Friday Facebook lives, giving the guests all the info and this is what it's going to be. And like, it will get on beforehand and we'll talk and walk you through it. A couple of times they've answered the questions before I could get to them. So now I don't give them the script. I'll give them the gist. Mm -hmm. I'll give them a couple of questions, but not the full script. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's something that I just started doing probably the last few ones that I've done because I was like, yeah, you know, my, yeah. yeah, my dad, my dad does a, a podcast for the music industry and okay. he, I, he interviewed me once when I was down at like visiting him and he needed a guest. And so as I, as he was kind of telling me the things, you know, we were at, cause we were hanging out before we were, you know, I was visiting him at his house. Right. So he's asking telling me the kind of things and I started engaging in conversation and he's like, stop, 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 stop telling me your answers. He's like, it won't be as authentic <laughs> once right. we're on camera he's like let me yep. want it or on radio for him it was radio but we wanted to feel authentic i want to be surprised by what mm -hmm. you have to say it'll create more co conversation and if i know what you're going to say right and it ends it so i love that you brought that up okay 
Um, okay, and now to tip number four, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. Well, not always perfect, but close, right? <laughs> I just think that it's the same tip that I gave before. You know, you just want to practice what you're going to say. If you're brand new to this and this is the first one and you're terrified, just start practicing. And I always tell people that are thinking about doing it, you know, I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what topic to talk about. I'm like, write down a few different topics that your customers or clients always ask you. Maybe you're a dog trainer and they ask you the same question about um, puppy proofing the house or jumping at the door or um, you know barking or whatever it is or potty training them. Those are usually the top dog training questions. So if you're getting those questions a lot, start practicing by giving out that information and think about it that way. So if you think when you're practicing, whether you're doing the um, only me or you're doing it in a private group page or you're recording yourself, practice those tips. So as you do it more and more, it'll just come naturally to you. You know, you'll just start thinking, oh yeah, this is what I want to talk about and then lay it out. So if you're going to do a weekly show, you know, maybe, maybe make a calendar or two months of these are the tips that I want to talk about. And then you could tease that while you're doing your live, but just practice what you're going to say. Um, and again, like questions happen, people will chime in, they start asking questions. You, if you're nervous about questions, you can always say, Hey guys, I definitely want your questions, but stay until the end and give us the questions. And that also helps retain viewers throughout your, um, show or your mm -hmm. live, whatever you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And then your last tip, tip number five. Well, it's not the last tip because I know you've got all kinds of other fun okay. props to go through. <laughs> but the last tip from the article was um, to be consistent. Yep. And you said that before, being consistent yeah. is the hardest part, right? Mm -hmm. You Things happen. I mean, I try my best to do Friday Facebook Lives weekly, but it doesn't always happen. Sometimes I'm away. Sometimes I'm at a show um, and it doesn't always happen. But if you can be the most consistent with you know, every Tuesday, you're going to have a show at two o'clock or every, you know, Monday, you're going to say, Hey, everybody, this is what we have in our store this week, or we just got a delivery, you know, you could do it that way. Um, and just try to be consistent with it. It's really difficult to uh, do one and done. And then you're like, or if you didn't get a lot of people paying attention, that consistency is real tough, because you're like, well, I didn't really get that many viewers, nobody was really there, nobody really liked it or shared it, right? Because that can really screw with your ego. And don't worry about that. Just be consistent. Try to do it weekly uh, or monthly, whatever you want. I would say weekly is probably best to start out. And and then just keep scheduling it. Absolutely. And the, you know, to that point, you know, in the beginning, it is, it's a lot of, you know, you don't have a lot of viewers, you're frustrated. And I think that by the time that any of us see, uh, you know, even if they're internet celebrities or video yeah. Facebook celebrities, by the time we're seeing them with thousands of interactions and engagements, like they've been doing this for years. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't just start this like three months ago. They've right. Been building audiences on other social networks and they understand digital marketing really, really well. So um, and they do a lot of other stuff really well, but it, it is, it's a long game. I mean, yes, occasionally you can have like successes overnight. Um, yep. But for the most part, it's consistency, commitment, and um, just keep trying. Just keep trying it and testing yeah. and doing more of what works. And I see Remy has a question. She said, uh, what is a good day and time to do a live show? And I speak about this a lot when people ask me this. You have to test it out. So I would say to you, try an 8 p.m. on Tuesday and see how your viewership is. But make sure that you promote it properly and don't get just, don't get discouraged that you don't have a lot of viewers at first. Ask your family and friends to watch and ask questions, you know, cheat the system because the more people that are liking, hearting, asking questions, staying on the whole time, the more that's gonna build up your page, right? And that's what we started this whole conversation about was the Facebook pages and our businesses. So if you're going from your pages, ask everybody you know, hey, I'm gonna start doing live videos, you know, can you start watching until you start um, doing that? And if that, if you, while you're testing Remy, if each time you're not, you're not seeing it, go into your analytics on Facebook. They give you really great analytics for the Facebook Live, and it'll just show you how many people watched, how many people reacted, how many shares there were, and go from there. And then the more that you go from there, you'll figure out which would be the best day and time because every business is gonna be different. I pick Friday just because it's a fun event, it's a fun show that I do, and I'm kind of completely done by the end of the week. Um, so I just pick Friday for that, and the I do it at lunchtime or Eastern mm -hmm. Standard Time. 
Yeah. And Remy, you can also look at your statistics on Facebook on when your audience and viewers are typically on Facebook too, not necessarily even engaging with your audience. You can look at that statistic. And I think even Facebook statistics are that something like 11 million or I don't know how many people are on Facebook between 7 p.m. and I think 11 p.m. Eastern. Right. So at night, it's um, it's it's obviously there's a lot of people on Facebook. So um, and then, you know, to answer Kim's question, too, um, she's just asking about if it's better to go live during business hours or after um, most people work during the day. Is that OK? And, you know, I'd say that, again, it depends on the business and it also depends on, you know, you not worrying so much about getting viewers for the live because it's a, it's a great video that you can use after it's going to stay on your page afterwards. Yep. So you really, in the beginning, I'd say do it when you're ready to do it <laughs> to just get yep. started. Yep. <laughs> started. But, um, and it also depends on what the point of your video is. And, right. and yeah. Um, and I you know, think for Kim also, I think it might be easier for some retailers to go live before they open the store because you know, once you turn that door key and you open the store, that's it. Your yeah. day is done. Like you're not doing a live video. You got customers. You got grooming. The phone's ringing off the hook. Deliveries. You're stocking the shelves. That's it. You're not doing live. So I think in the morning could be good. There's actually um, Dr. Judy Morgan. She is uh, a veterinarian, and she does like 7 a.m. live videos. She's got a huge following, but um, well, huge, but she's got a really good following, almost like 50 50 thousand on her Facebook business page. And mm -hmm. she does, I think, 7 a.m. every day. She does a lot of live streaming. And she's got a lot of viewerships at 7 a.m. because people are waking up. They have their coffee. So, yeah, definitely test it out. But I think beforehand could be good for you, Kim. And like Candace said, it doesn't really matter because if it's a good video, you're showing stuff that's in the store. And then people are going to see that throughout the day. And maybe it'll get them to come to your store. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's different, re you know, there's different reasons if you're going to do like uh, if a delivery just showed up and you've got mounds and mounds and mounds of dog food that just came off that truck, yeah. you know, and you want to show people before you start putting it on the shelves or putting it in back stock, like how much dog food you get delivered every week. Right. And we <laughs> pictures like that. We'd have our staff like lay uh, lay across like the pallets of dog food. That's funny. We yeah. Didn't have enough room inside our store or some up on the sidewalks and um, or, or that can be fine. And eventually as you get more comfortable and if you have team, um, I, I would go, I used to go live in my store or record videos oh, yeah. like we were open, but you have to have somebody else there to obviously help customers and answer the phone. Right. Right. <laughs> but, and as you get more comfortable, it's, it starts to seem less weird that yeah. you're talking to this camera. <laughs> Cause in the <laughs> beginning, it's very strange. And, yeah. uh, Eventually, and then eventually, and the, I think nowadays too, customers are used to it. They start to see it more, and you can even play off of like their energy. And if they seem interested, you can start to interview them, and it really truly becomes live. Yeah. Um, but, uh, um, the one thing I will say about that too, we have one of our um, Pet Boss Club members. They were practicing live in their store, or felt inspired after seeing something, and <laughs> there was Taylor Swift was on the radio really loudly in the background as they were they like cut off. Things. It got stopped because of the the copyright of the music in the background that was playing in their store. Yeah. So you have to be aware of that for sure. And also another tip is if you are videoing in your store, whether it's an event or um, you're just doing live and there's kids that come in the store, you don't want to have kids on camera. I mean, even if the parents give verbal uh, permission, you know, it goes back to getting a release signed and all of that. So um, the way around that is if you're doing a Facebook live at an event, you can just put a sign up says that we're going to be doing Facebook live during, you know, your face and uh, dog and what person, persona, likeliness, voice, all of that. You can just Google that and then just put mm -hmm. up a sign and that yeah. will help cover you. Even, but you want to th sign on the door, you know, if your store as they walk in, at least, yeah. you know, I know yeah. that you know, film crews come in sometimes they, they put yeah. that on the door. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Well, you guys, if you have questions, type them in the thread. I'm going to move on. We're going to move on now to the article that I wrote that contributed to this article, and then we'll wrap it up afterwards with all those little accessories and, and things <laughs> that um, Nancy has mentioned. So um, my article here was really about, you know, Nancy's prepped us to go live. You've practiced, and now you're live. And so my article was about creating the interaction and creating the engagement and keeping people on. And so, you know, I like to, uh, and, and I'm not, I'm not, 
going to say I'm great at it so far. I mean, it definitely still seems slightly awkward to me, <laughs> even as much video as I do, but um, to encourage interaction right away. And, yeah. you know, that what, you know, I think we've seen it a lot of times, especially I remember Periscope was like really heavy with this since you brought it up, but it was always give me the likes, give me the hearts, give me the loves. And that's mm -hmm. probably a little overdone at this point. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't start, just wouldn't start right away that way. But, um, in the beginning, you know, you want to, if you, if you don't have any viewership, like if you don't have, when you go live, if you don't have any viewership, you need to be ready to, um, because the whole point, well, first of all, the whole point of the whole, the shift in Facebook live is to create engagement. And so, um, we have to be, once we're on camera, somehow engaging with the people that are watching. So in the beginning, you know, you want to encourage, once you have viewers, you want to encourage some sort of engagement right of way. And so when you're on camera, you can't see who's watching you unless they choose to participate. So you can say, you know, say things like, oh, great, I see that we've got some people joining me today. Where are you watching from? You know, or uh, are you a customer of ours? Or if not, what part of town do you live in? You know, try to get something so that you can start to get some comments with on your page or again, some likes or some hearts without actually having to ask for them. Um, create, ask a question that relates to maybe um, something that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, one thing actually that isn't in my, in my articles, uh, but uh, I've seen a lot lately um, with our club members is people are just going live and, or they make a, they make one, a one sentence statement of like, we're talking about dog food and which is good, but I would really love for in the, in the copy of the post, to talk a little bit more about what it is you're talking about. Because that way, when as it shows up, people will see in the in your post above it that you are talking about dog food, but why should they watch you? <laughs> you right. know, what is what's it is it that's important about why they need to care about feed what they feed their dog? And then um, that would be a great way to start to get them engaged in the beginning. You know, if you were talking about dog food, it's, yeah, you want to hook you want to hook them a little bit. You know, hook them a little bit because yeah, they they either one you know half the time they can't hear you. They don't have the audio on, right? You know, they're scrolling on their feed. They don't hear you. They just see you pop up in their feed or they go to your page, and so they get an or they get a notification that you're live and they can't hear you. So they need to be able to know what you're talking about and how they should start engaging with you or why they should turn the sound on. Right. Um, so get that engagement right away. Now, um, I also like the idea of um, keeping them watching. And this is easy for retailers when you have um, some product or if you have um, a free gift or a coupon or something that you can kind of save as a teaser mm -hmm. at the end of the video. You know, I did, a, I did a sidewalk sale or I did a video for a sidewalk sale at my old store. And I, at the beginning of it, um, I said something like, you know, if you're, if you hang on till the end of this video, I got a special offer for you guys. And then I, and I started talking about all the stuff that was at the sidewalk sale and it wasn't a long video. It was only, you know, maybe three minutes. Right. But we got to the end and I said, okay, if you've held out this long, then you, you're going to know what I'm going to share. And it's that you guys get an extra $10 off. You just have to come in and mention it, you know? Yeah. And so it kind of can keep people on the end and then you reward yeah. them for something. On. There's all kinds of ways to do that. Yeah, you know? totally. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the next one was about waiting and warming up your audience. And um, that's not so much the engagement part that I talked about earlier. The, the waiting and warming up your audience is that let's say you're talking about the topic of dog food and why, you know, why giving your dog, uh, a, you know, why following a certain set of um or let's see, sorry, well, let's say like it's it's more about why you should, yeah, feed, feed nutritious dog food and you're going to go through the types of dog foods that you have at the store and why they're better than maybe some of the commercial stuff. Before you get into the content that you want to share because you're waiting for viewers to come on, you have to have some other little fact or story, and it doesn't have to be long, but something to kind of hold the room, right, hold the attention span of Facebook's, band, you know, the, I don't know, gap in moment when people hear that you're find out you're going live and when they actually start to tune in and listen to you. So right. that, that piece of content might be, let's talk about how you and what an ingredient label is actually, or like how an ingredient ingredient label is organized 
and or maybe ha you know that the most important ingredients at the front and it goes down and becomes you know less important at the end or maybe it's even you talk about how marketing on the bag is really just the bag and it's just marketing okay. it's on the front it doesn't have to be on the back but you're kind of adding something else that's related to your topic but isn't your topic right um to just hold people through the engagement process to get them and to it's join something it. that something like that they wouldn't even know anyway so it's a really good tip to right. do stuff like that that they wouldn't look at you know yeah and um i i i mentioned this and i brought it up because i have also seen people where they go live and then they're like <laughs> No one's watching me. I'm just, I'm gonna just wait. waiting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I have a viewer. Yeah. Do we have any viewers? You know, and so like that's where where I think if you can because because the majority of your viewers are going to happen after when you're not live on those right. and so you want to just get started. You don't want to start. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, my next tip was to um, have some sort of a call to action at the end of your at the end of your video. So it, the call to action can also be in the copy at the top, or maybe you save it for later and you repost, you know, the call to action, or but you definitely at the end have to bring a call to action. Yeah, and so definitely. That, that, yeah, that call to action can be tag, you know, this dog food was this dog food and or um, you know, natural dog food and feeding your dog well is so so important to me. I want you to think about three dog owners right now that live in our community that you could tag in this post that need to know about this. Right. You know, and they tag and now you've got some more people, but you yeah. can't add like three or four more call to actions, right? You know, your <laughs> one call to action. Yeah. And one good call to action too. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's coming in for a free sample or bringing your, bringing their bag of dog food into the store so that you can read the ingredient label and actually help them decide if it's a good food or not, you know? And, and so there needs to be one solid call to action. And then uh, the last thing is to entertain with a big personality. Yeah. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to be like loud and, uh, you know, and, and not yourself. But right. because you're on camera, people are used to seeing television or news anchors or, you know, hearing radio personalities who are trained. <laughs> yeah. If you are, you know, kind of your normal self and quiet, you know, and you're nervous. It's, it's not going to be as engaging. And I know, Nancy, you probably talk a lot about that. Uh, because uh, being having been a, in the t as a TV producer, yeah. Oh, but I, I I totally agree with that. So I have a friend that was um is in the is in the media, and I media coached mm -hmm. her a few years ago. I think it was at uh, Total Pet Expo or Super Zoo. I honestly don't even remember now. And I was like, I don't understand. And she would get really like squeaky and like quiet voice. And I'm like, what the hell? Are you ten? What's going on with that voice? <laughs> I'm so I'm so mean. I'm like, I'm going to be tough. You asked me to media coach you. I want to be bring you out of your shell because this is not who you are that I know. And mm -hmm. she is, you know, I taught her simple tricks. Like, you know, if you're standing, like how to stand. So you're not bobbing and weaving. Because then you see, mm -hmm. you see people or the phone is like, whoa, and you're like, oh, and I get nauseous. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I can't keep watching that. I'm getting seasick. Right. So like really simple things. And then just to be confident, I'm like, you know what you're talking about. You have an amazing expertise and anybody that's watching this, you all have expertise that you are really good at, right? It doesn't matter what it is. If it's the fact what you own in your pet store, what you know about your dogs, how you are as a dog sitter, whatever it is, you have that expertise. And so Think about it that way, because if I would say, just think about it as if you're talking to people in person, but remember you're on camera, <laughs> like I said before, so you don't start remember realizing, uh oh, wait a minute, I was live. But, you know, just really like, don't, like you said, don't get that like hunched in or, you know, you can see people that are like really scared and it's okay in the beginning, but if you do it weekly, do it more and more, you'll get better about it. But that's so yeah. funny because yeah, they're, they're it's not who they are. It's like, that's not who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's just practice, 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 because it's just like when you work out, it's a, it's a muscle you have to work out. Yeah. And you know, you'll get your own rhythm. You'll find your personality through practicing, like, you know, the recommendations you've already made about either on your own video camera or only, yeah. um, there's other people I've heard that say, go into the bathroom and look in the mirror and practice, you know, write, write a couple sentences and put it on the mirror and practice those couple sentences in different ways, you yep. know, smile or you know, be serious, try it different ways. And, you know, listen, whenever I used to go to TV segments that I was going to be on the air, it was something that I pitched to them that I was going to be on TV. So I knew what I was talking about, but you never know what they were going to ask uh, yeah. when you're there. 
And so as I was driving to the segment, I would fully be practicing for like half an hour, talking to myself out loud, la, 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 doing the thing. And then I get there and like, they wouldn't even talk about most of what I was rehearsing. That's right. But it was okay because like I was prepared, I was prepared. I practiced, I was prepared. And mm -hmm. if they didn't ask me every single thing that I wanted to get out, at least I got some of it out and I knew. Um, right. I was on the Today Show one time for um, a spoke the spokesperson for an event that I was helping host that I worked on for years. It wasn't in the pet industry. And the executive director didn't want to be on camera. I was like, we need to be on the Today Show. We need to get like Al Roker. Come on, we could do it, blah, blah, blah. And so they were like, it went down the line. And I was like an outside consultant for them, helping them with PR and media and all that. And somehow they were like, we want you to do it. I'm like, I don't want to do it. I'm like, this is your thing. I was terrified. Eight seconds of airtime that I had with Al Roker and I got everything out. I didn't, um, and, uh, and I was a nervous wreck. So if somebody that's been on TV or been in front of the camera, you still might feel those nerves, but the better that you practice at it, the better you'll get. It was really yes. scary. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So, um, if, again, if anyone has questions, just type them in the feed. We have about 15 minutes left. And while you're thinking about what you want to ask, I'm going to have Nancy go ahead and show us some of those fun things she's got. Yeah. So the first one is on your phone. You have to download this app. And this just really became available um, not too long ago. And instead of just Facebook Live, you want to do Facebook Creator. I'm just waiting to see if it'll open up for me. Do you know about Facebook Creator, Candace? No, I haven't heard of that. Okay, you're gonna love this tip. So Facebook Creator, you can um, do a Facebook Live. It's vertical though, only you can only do it this way, not this way, um, but you can put your logo in there. So you can go oh, cool. onto your page and do your logo and it's just, a, it's a free app. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. Kind of hard to see, but if you can see, I'm looking the wrong way. There you go. Right there in the corner is my okay. logo. Okay, great. So if I hit start live video, you're gonna see the logo in there when I go live. Cool. So, yeah, the other thing is that a lot of these, you know, a lot of the other, the platforms like the Be Live TV or yeah. so like all these other platforms that were trying, you know, trying to work with Facebook and make these things possible, Facebook's probably thinking now like, well, why should these, why can't we do these things? Right. And so. Yeah, I would totally cool. pay $25 a month for Be Live to be 100% better than it is and pay yeah. Facebook the money. Like the there's always been problems with Be Live. You're like and all of a sudden they're frozen. So, but that's a really good tip. It's on your phone, Facebook Creator. You do have to put the logo on through your page. There's an article if you guys want the article, I can send you the link to the article. It's pretty easy to do. I've only done it a couple of times, but it's a pretty cool way to brand it and then if people share your video, your logo's on there. And so people are gonna, even if they don't see who's actually talking or watch it, they're gonna see your logo. So if you're trying to look for brand awareness, that's a really easy thing to do. The other, I know, I just I just started with that uh, not too long ago. The only thing downfall is that it is vertical. So since it's vertical, yeah. I would highly suggest that if you're gonna do live videos and use Facebook Creator or your phone, that you use a tripod. Now this is a regular standard tripod, but what I have on top of it is what you hook your phone into, right? So I put my phone in there like that. You could do it either way. And you could also put it in this way. And this is actually from a selfie stick that I bought that I wasn't using as a selfie stick. I still don't, I've never used it. I don't know how to do it. But at the bottom of the selfie stick, it had a little tripod and it came on this thing. I got it like Amazon. So you can see it was right there. So if that doesn't work, if you don't have a big tripod and you're just looking to do some, you know, live from your store and have something stationary, a lot of us try to balance it. The dog moves, the phone goes flying, you crack your case, you don't want to crack your screen, you don't want to do that. So this little tripod here is, I think I got this at Target, like, I don't even know, a couple of years ago, $25. And if you're out and about, it actually bends and you can hook it onto things. You know, and then you can, yeah. And then you can attach great, great that to it. To go around all kinds of different displays and you can just yes. loop them, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. So there's all different kinds of tripods like this. You don't have to get the one with the bendy legs, but I think one that's not too big is a really good way to do it. Um, and then, you know, you could do that. Another thing that as you do more and more lives, I have my earphone in, right? So you can use this. I just did this tonight because sometimes it's easier for me to hear when I'm doing um, any kind of interview like this. But 
you can use that. But if you don't have that or you're looking to look a little more professional, you can get, this is a lavalier mic, right? It's by Audio Technica. I think I got these two for 40 bucks. They're pretty easy to use. It comes with a standard three millimeter um, jack that you can just pop right into the earphone. You'll wanna play with it. There's batteries that come with it. You wanna test it out uh, and stuff like that. It might seem complicated. It's really not that complicated. If you're doing a two person interview, you get a splitter. I have a splitter and then you can plug that one end in, put both lobs into the splitter and then you can hear both of you talking. So a lavalier mic is a good, is a really good thing to have. Even if you don't use it for everything, it could be something if you're doing a little bit more uh, produced lives because I always look at it this way that the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, does the mic work for Androids? If the Android has the three millimeter plug, there might be a connection. So um, I believe the phone, yeah, my phone has it, my iPhone has it, but you could always just Google it and look, there's all kinds of stuff. Yes, Pam, that's right. You have the uh, the wire cutter. Yep, reviews for best tripods and iPhones and stuff like that. But you just want to try it out because the more that you do it, the more that you might get sucked in. When Periscope first came out, I did not want to do Periscope to save my life. I was like, I'm not doing another social media. I watch one person and that was it. All my media stuff that I do, I just, I wanted to do it. So, um, but play with it. And the other thing is lighting, right? So Sometimes you see somebody going live and they're like in the darkest shadows and you can't see them or they're like this <laughs> or they're like this. And I'm like, no, I can't see you. You're all over the place. You need a light in front of you. Even if you pull a lamp up or if you pull your chair up to a window, this is if you're sitting, if you're in the store and doing it, trying to find the best spot that if you have the camera on you, if you're focusing it the other way, showing unboxing and stuff that's going on in the store, the lighting doesn't always have to be perfect when you start. Mm -hmm. So those are some of my tips and all the trade secrets. And <laughs> yeah, those are great. Remy also wants to know um, if they have if you have a particular recording software app on the phone. Um, I mean, if you're streaming, through, yeah. I mean, if you're streaming live, you're just going to go live, right? And then you can download it. Um, if you want to record uh, software, I mean, I use a platform called um, Camtasia mm -hmm. you do have to pay for it, but I yeah. found it's much easier for me to use than iMovie. Right. Um, so, and I love but, iMovie. I, I feel like iMovie is easy, but Camtasia is great. But also Remy, the thing is that even if you're not using a lavalier mic and you're using like there's small handheld mics that you can plug into your phone when you're outside or if you're somewhere where it's windy or there's just a lot going on and you really want to focus that audio, it's going to be hard to hear. And a lot of people are like Candace was saying, you want to keep people on, on and watching. And if the audio is tough. You ever on the phone with somebody and they're like emptying their dishwasher and you're like, what the hell are you doing? Looking for a cat. Oh, stop. Yeah, if you're at a if you're at a dog charity event in your town exactly. or you're at a trade show, like you know, we've done if, even if you're if you put your phone farther away from you just so that they can capture the ambiance, you know, it's not gonna pick up the audio as much if there's a lot of also background noise. So those lavalier mics are great for that. Right, right. So Cindy asked, how do you change the phone in Facebook? live to have the text not be backwards. It depends if you're trying to focus on yourself, it is it may be backwards if you have text behind you. Um, but if you have the phone forward facing, you know, if you're shooting like this, it's not going to be backwards. But if you flip the camera, then your text is going to be backwards. So every also a trick with a with a magic wand or something. Yeah, um, there's a might be a few apps and um I forget there was one thing that we used I used to do on Periscope to make it, but I don't remember now what it was. Yeah, I think we've talked, Cindy, we've talked about that in the other in our group for Pet Boss Nation. I think someone was asking that and, and there was a member who did screenshots of um, like the magic wand and exactly when you should when you should click it. So I can tag you back uh, in a post on that. I'll look for that for you. OK, lots of questions tonight. I love it. Let's see. I don't know if that's a question or not from Remy. Uh, OK, yeah. I I think you mean a mic? Yeah, she's just, you gotta try try things out. Um, all right, everybody. So before we wrap it up here, I will still wait for, we'll take a couple more questions. Um, you know, any, any either trends or last tips for going live? Well, like you said before, you know, I, 
that the, you know, we're going towards video. Video is here, it is not going away. Um, the, some of the statistics, if you look up the statistics, are pretty crazy about how much time people spend watching video over anything else. Like, I know I don't watch TV anymore, right? I'm always on my computer. <laughs> like, cancel that cable because everything's going to be on there. And if you've noticed, Facebook is starting to stream a lot of shows now on there. So it might have been an influencer in and out of the pet industry, doesn't matter, that they have their own shows on there as well. Um, and all of the places that you can go live now or watch live video, um, it, you know, it's pr pretty much every platform at this point now. So if you're thinking you want to do, um, you know what? I have, uh, uh, Paul is asking, do you upload your Facebook videos to YouTube? I have, but the engagement's not as good that way. So kind of like mm -hmm. Facebook doesn't like YouTube, YouTube does not like Facebook. <laughs> so I would just put native videos, edited videos on your YouTube channel. Um, I was trying to repurpose it. And you know what? I'll probably still throw my um, interviews up there, the ones that I really like. And not, I'm not really that worried about it. To me, it's just more content. But you probably won't get as good of, as good of viewership on it at all. Mm -hmm. But the other trend was that, you know, they said a uh, lot video is going to be um, watched the most or 80% is going to be by 2020. I think we're pretty much already there. Um, there was some crazy statistic about the amount of hours <laughs> watching live video in a day it was like 40 years worth of videos, something like that. It was nuts. I'm not sure. I don't remember that exactly. It was a few years ago. Do you find that if you're not in the frame, it is not watched? Yeah. So that's a really good question. Kim said, do you find that if you're not in the frame, it's not watched as much as you are in the frame? So I have two comments on this. One, when I do Facebook Live on my dog's page, if anybody wants to follow him, Adventures with Cody the Blue Nose, he gets a lot of interaction because it's the dog being silly, right? Drives me crazy. I'm like, I'm giving all this great content. And I my dog had 100 and whatever viewers, and I had like 50. Come on. <laughs> so... You can start on the dog if you're doing something and you guys can have so much fun with the pets in your stores or the pets out and about. And then you can turn the camera on yourself. I think that there's a guy on YouTube that just grew his channel to like 30,000 uh, subscribers in like the last year. And he was not on the camera once. It was all like tutorials, which is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Not pet related, but mm -hmm. um, so, but I also think that, you know, it sh gives you that no like and trust factor that if you're brave enough to go on camera, show what you're doing in your store, doing all of that, people are gonna relate to you more, right? They're gonna say, oh, I saw you on your video or you'll be out and about and they'll start talking to you more because you are you're, might've messed up or the light might've fallen or whatever is happening that you're actually speaking on camera. So I would say try it both ways. And just like we were saying before, Kim, test it out. Do a few videos without you on and a few videos with you on and see where your engagement is better. Mm -hmm. Or even have your team jump on too. I mean, I always say the people buy from people, you know, so even in your pet yeah. business, even though you want to show your pets, you know, it's really about them yeah. getting to know the small business owner in their town or who they're giving their money to and the story behind that that business owner or their team and, and, you know, having those, you know, getting to know those personalities is all important. And the video allows us to do that so easily. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> very, very easily. All right. Well, um, Nancy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And if anybody wants to get a hold of you, um, what's the best way for them to find you? Sure. I mean, anyway, you can go to my website, AmericanPetProfessionals.com. Um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at American Pet Professionals, or you can just email me. I'll just put my email in. So um, that's usually the best way to find me. My email awesome. has been crazy lately, but thank you so much for, if I can spell, having me, Candace. This is a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> and if you want to um, get more of Nancy's tips, they're all over, all over online in our social media. And she also contributes to the Pets Plus magazine. So Nancy, thank you so much for joining us. I'll have you pop off camera now as I wrap it up with everybody. Thank you all so right. much. All right, so thank you for joining us tonight. I know that you have lots of ways to spend your Wednesday nights, but 
I appreciate that you come and join us for our Pets Plus Live Beyond the Pages. And I truly believe that we are stronger together. So um, please invite other pet professionals that you know to follow Pets Plus and Pet Boss Nation online or join our free Facebook group communities. We both have them. And I just encourage you to try some of these ideas that we're asking baby steps in the water, just, just implement, just do it. Okay, everybody, lead the pack, pet bosses. Have a great night.